Doing the introduction today is Dr. Patricia Pavier. Dr. Pavier is the group leader of the Radiological Materials Group at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. She's also the chair of the Gen4 International Forum Education and Training Working Group. Patricia. Thank you so much, Berta. Good morning or good evening, uh, everyone. We are happy to have uh, with us today Dr. Jio Shin, who was the popular vote winner of the 20. 21 Pitch Your Gen 4 Research Competition. He recently completed his PhD at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology in the field of nuclear materials on the subject of development of nanocarbide dispersed advanced radiation resistance austenistic stainless steels for reactor internals. His PhD focuses on the development of next generation nuclear in core materials including small modular reactor, sodium fast reactor, and fusion reactor to demonstrate the superior radiation resistance feature. He's currently a postdoctoral fellow in the Korea Atomic Energy Research Institute. So without any delay, Gio, I give you the floor. Uh, thank you again uh, for giving us uh, your webinar. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Jiyo Shin, presenting on development of nanosite carbide dispersed advanced radiation resistant arsenic stainless steel for generation four systems. Before the introduction of my research, I have to say that it's really thankful to give me an opportunity to present my research in this generation four international forum. Structural materials represent the key for containment of nuclear fuel and fission products, as well as reliable and thermodynamically efficient production of electrical energy from nuclear reactors. As a new concept of the reactors has developed to guarantee the life extension of existing reactors and development of next generation reactors, design high performance radiation resistant material is considered as a key strategy. Among the various Gen 4 reactors, this page shows six generation four concepts, which are sodium fast reactor, reed fast reactor, gas fast reactor, very high temperature reactor, supercritical water cooled reactor, and molten salt reactor. These representative reactor types have a proposed operating temperature and lifetime displacement damage rebels for structure materials, especially. SFR would be expected around around uh, 200 dPa, which is similar with MSR type. In addition, depending on operating temperature region, where they can be utilized in a neutron irradiation environment, existing structural materials have rather limited, as shown in bottom side uh, bottom side figure. At low temperature, the reduced ductility also associate with a low temperature radiation hardening creates condition where fracture toughness is reduced by low temperature irradiation. Therefore, the operating temperature is restricted to higher temperature where invertment does not occur for anticipated normal and transient operating conditions. Furthermore, the upper, uh, upper operating temperature Limits is typically determined by thermal creep strength or high temperature helium invertement consideration. In addition to temperature effect, the microstructural evolution in the eroded material depending on numerical parameters such as primary knock on atom energy, displacement dose, damage rate, crystal structure, solute, and transmutant elements, which are caused by energetic neutral irradiation. This figure shows example of typical temperature dependent TM microstructures produced by irradiated materials. At low temperature, second fourth tetrahedral dislocation loops are observed, and network dislocations, void bubbles, precipitates, and solute segregation are observed at intermediate temperature. At high temperature, helium invertement uh, can be caused due to the green boundary. Uh, green boundary helium cavities. Thus, depending on temperature, evolution of defect can be differed from dislocation loop to void and helium cavities. 
more specifically, radiation damage caused five main treat to the operation of structural materials emerging at different, a different operating temperature and damage levels. Coupled with, coupled with irradiation temperature and damage level, radiation hardening and embrittlement faced instability, irradiation creep, voice failing, and helium embrittlement would be happen. Meanwhile, generation four system requires uh, these four priority areas and the materials should be developed for the various type of generation four vectors as follows the expected operation temperature, neutron spectrum, and coolant uh, compatibility, as you can see the right hand side of uh, the table. A principal challenge in the development of Gen 4 nuclear reactor is the discovery of all advanced structural material that can endure extreme environments. Indeed, our Gen 4 reactor's concept places a very high burden on core materials, which will have to withstand high operating temperature, intense fast neutron flux, and contact with the cross environments. Furthermore, the objective of the Gen 4 program include extended design lifetime to 60 years, increased fuel burn up and cycle length as compared to current reactors. As a result of that, the maximum radiation dose for in core materials could be exceed 200 dPa. Currently, ferritin martensic seals are being considered as a candidate for internal materials comparing with an often stainless seals because of their lower thermal expansion, higher thermal conductivity, and higher radiation tolerance, uh, etc. In particular, the swelling resistance of FPM seals is much better than Austin stainless steel in general. However, these materials have been known to be susceptible to a DBTT, which caused a low fracture toughness and failed by a brittle fracture at room temperature. Moreover, most FM steels have lower high temperature oxidation resistance compared to Austin and stainless steels. Meanwhile, Austin and stainless steels also have been extensively used in the past as a first candidate materials of sodium fast reactor hexagonal rubber tubes. However, as you can see, the poor swelling resistance is on one of the major reasons why an Austin and stainless steel was remitted in the Gen 4 system compared to FMS or FM ODS. Therefore, my research strategy regarding the early development is to increase, increase the poor swelling resistance based on the Austin and stainless steels. Here is the content for today's presentation. First, I will introduce the development of the RS alloy for Gen 4 reactor. And second, characteristic of radiation resistance for the developed alloy. First topic is development of RS alloy, which full name is Advanced Radiation Resistant Often in Stainless Steel. Up to now, there are lots of the development strategies to increase the radiation resistant characteristics by using an alloying element such as high nickel, low silicon content, high constant lattice fraction, high uh, Schmidt factor, low Taylor factor, small grain, cold rocking, and the precipitate, etc. As you can see the right bottom side figure, depending on the chemical composition and microstructure features, oil swelling resistance increase as following the damage level. And in addition, in addition, as mentioned in previous page, three general strategies, uh, strategies can be employed to increase radiation tolerance in materials. Radiation resistance matrix phase, immobilized point defect, and engineered high sink strength microstructures. Over the strategies are based on the introduction of various microstructural features, which may act as a sink site for point defect. For example, as you can see, nano grain, which have 100 nanometer square grain, this location coupled with the precipitate, FMS or FM ODS, high entropy alloy, and trim boundary. 
the things can promote a recombination of radiation induced point defect, which is which are the vacancies and the interstitials, and thereby delay the formation of the voids and the dislocation loops, which would be caused by the clustering of the vacancies and interstitials. The effect of these microstructure features have been demonstrated by kinetic rate, uh, kinetic rate theory models and lots of the experimental studies in suppressing void swelling or reduce, reducing radiation induced element segregation. However, forming the nanoscale grain by a severe plastic deformation technique by using an equal channel annular pressing will be limited in terms of their applicability to reactor internal components, especially those with a complex shape and large size. Also, powder metallurgy coupled with a mechanical alloying or hot isostatic pressing has the same rhythm with the ECAM method. Another thing is cold rolling and the precipitation heat treatment for forming a precipitate inside the grain. However, however as you can see bottom side figure, uh, severely deformed grains were formed and the precipitate can be formed along the deformation band along the rolling direction, which have a stringer type precipitate. Therefore, in this study, we developed a new approach to form a high density of the uniformly distributed nanosized carbide in an often stainless steel matrix. For this, we developed a model alloy and applicable uh, thermal mechanical processing to control the dislocation structure, microstructure, and precipitation of uh, fine carbide. As you can see this flow chart, to develop the RS alloy, the chemical composition was defined based on the thermodynamic simulation. Then the ingots were made by VIM method followed by a newly designed thermal mechanical processing. The detailed design procedure will be presented in the next page. After that, microstructure analysis in terms of the grain structure and precipitation morphologies of precipitates, mechanical corrosion test, and calculation of the sink strength were conducted. Among the alloys, irradiation and FCC uh, resistance were conducted uh, for the candidate alloys, which were selected from the screening process. So in this study, only a third, uh, third phase alloy group will be present. The purpose of the alloy design was to identify an appropriate set of the composition range from austin and stainless steels for nuclear power plant application with improved swelling resistance. The minor elements were controlled to form a nano-sized precipitate. Previously, minor elements such as niobium, vanadium, and titanium have been extensively used to form a carbide and nitride in steel since they have formed a stable precipitate based on the enthalpies and the solubility. Meanwhile, generally, nitride can form a very high stable precipitate and the carbon nitride during the thermal mechanical processing. Therefore, Niobium addition was intended to form a large, a large amount of the uniformly distributed niobium carbide precipitate within the arsenic matrix as a primary, uh, primary precipitate compared to the titanium nitride. Here is briefly introduction of all the design process conducted by Thermocalc uh, software. The composition is only regarding the third phase uh, alloys. To form a nanosized precipitate, titanium and nitrogen and niobium and carbon contents were set based on the thermodynamics. Moreover, to pre uh, prevent the calcium precipitate, a uh, small amount of the manganese and the uh, molybdenum were controlled. For a sufficient corrosion resistance in the anticipated operating environments, the chromium content was selected as 24% then the nickel composition was selected as 21 weight percent to form a fully authentic phase by balancing, by balancing the high chromic content. Consequently, the simulation lizards were shown in left side figure, left side figure. and overall, the matrix is austenite phase and a small amount of niobium carbide or titanium nitride were formed inside the grain.
all of the chemical oh sorry all of the chemical composition for each batch are tabulated in this page from the batch number a or batch number one which is rs-1 to rs-8 the chemical composition was modified based on the microstructure and mechanical process. The RS-6, uh, 7, and 8 were belonging in phase 3 batchy, and high chromium, high nickel, and controlled minor elements are as shown in this uh, table. The detailed information is publication in previous the patents. To form a nanosized precipitate, newly designed thermal mechanical processing should be needed. Right-hand side figure shows the schematic of the TMP applied to the plate of the RS alloys considering the non-recrystallization temperature. The temperature concept was motivated from the thermal mechanical processing of the low alloy steel, as you can see the right, uh, left-hand side. The plates were homogenized at 100, uh, 1,200 Celsius for two hours and air cooled to the starting rolling temperature. Then a total of the six rolling passes were applied to achieve uh, uh, around the 70% thickness reduction for, uh, after the final rolling temperature was reached. Three different rolling conditions were applied according to the TNR, non-recrystallized temperature, which was determined via double heat deformation test. Under the rolling condition of the 1HR, or six rolling passes were above the TNR. For 2HR, four rolling passes were above the TNR and two, uh, two were below the TNR. For 3HR, two rolling passes were above the TNR and last of, uh, last of the passes uh, were below the TNR. Thus, from the 1HR to 3HR, the number of the rolling passes below the TNR gradually increased, as you can see the table. The details regarding the rolling condition are presented in the right bottom side of the table. Then the, uh, the plates were held for two hours for precipitation heat treatment followed by air cooling to room temperature for the complete, uh, completion of the TMP. The microstructure of the RSO alloy after the homogenizing heat treatment and, be, uh, and before the formation is present in OM image. The grains are large owing to the grain growth during the homogenization. However, because of the peeling effect of the titanium nitride, the grains had a mean size of the 115 micrometer, which is almost half of the data of the commercial three or four stainless steel with the same heat treatment condition. Thus, the grain growth was inhibited. The microstructure of the hollowed low, low and the quenched samples are shown in right uh, upper figures. As the hollow hot loading process are conducted on, under the non recrystallization temperature, the amount of the dislocations increased, but over saturation dislocation and cell structure were observed in 3HR condition. After precipitation heat treatment, only 2P condition shows uniformly distributed nanocyte uh, precipitation inside the grain. Meanwhile, 1P condition shows chrome carbide and niobium carbide along the grain boundary and 3P condition shows stringer type precipitates on the dislocation pile up region. Therefore, 2P condition was selected as a final TMP condition for this developed alloy. The detailed microstructure regarding the nanosized niobium carbide precipitates is presented in here. As you can see, the BFTM and HRTM images, a large amount of the uniformly distributed nanosized niobium carbide precipitate are formed inside the grain, and the precipitation have cube-on-cube -cube orientation relationship with offset matrix. Moreover, the precipitates have semi-coherent relationship with matrix. Therefore, it can be said that stable niobium carbide precipitates were formed in the grain in the matrix during the thermal mechanical processing. Uh, in other batches, the microstructure features are similar. 
the side density, uh, the side density and the distribution of the nano size precipitates are shown in this page. Overall, the nano size nibium carbide of precipitates have five to ten nanometer as mean diameter with a volumetric density of the ten to the twenty two to ten to the twenty three per cubic meter. Especially the RS8 shows similar microstructure feature with the well-known ODS alloys. So a new approach for forming a high density of the uniformly distributed nanosized carbide in an arsenic stainless steel matrix was developed. To guarantee the corrosion properties, a high chromium and high nickel content I'll include and minor elements were used to form a nanosized precipitate. Compared to the commercial stainless steel and other radiation resistant alloy, RS alloy shows higher precipitation density and comparable to ODS alloy. The second topic is radiation resistance of the RS alloy. In this section, the radiation resistance characteristic was focused on void swelling and irradiation hardening resistance. As I briefly explained the effect of the defect sink on the radiation resistance at introduction parts, they may act as a sink site for point defects. The sinks can promote a recombination of radiation induced point defects for vacancies and the interstitials and thereby delay the formation of the voids and dislocation loops, which would be caused by the clustering of them. In addition to defect things, the major elements can be laid with the radiation resistance. As you can see these figures, the beneficial effect of the nickel between 15% and 60%, and conversely, the harmful effect of the chrome between the 7% and uh, to uh, 30 percent on the resistance of the swelling of tonary alloy by a uh, strong ion irradiation dose. It have been, it have been uh, explained that the mobility of the vacancy depends on the binding energy of solute vacancy complexes, which can be formed more easily when the binding energy is greater than uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 Electrical bolts and enhance the recombination process. Especially nickel can increase the incubation dose for any initiation of the void swelling because it has high binding energy with vacancy, which is uh, 0 0.23, uh, 0 0.26 electrical volts. Meanwhile, addition of the chromium beyond 15 weight percent is not beneficial for swelling due to the low binding energy between the chrome, chromium and the vacancies, which is uh, 0 0.06 electrovolts. The qualitative analysis results regarding the sink strengths of the RS alloy are inserted in right-hand side figure to compare to radiation resistant alloys such as FMS and OES alloys. Based on the calculated sink strengths caused by the micros feature, the RS alloy shows similar with FMS and all the stage of the ODS alloy depending on the batches. Here is the objective of, to evaluate the radiation resistance of the RS alloy. The radiation experiments were conducted uh, using, uh, using an ion irradiation to emulate neutron irradiation. Then, measurement of the void size and density and the calculation of void swelling were conducted in terms of the void swelling resistance. In addition, in addition to measure the irradiation hardening resistance, nano indentation experiments were conducted before and after irradiation. Finally, radiation resistance characteristics of the RS alloys were compared to commercial arsenic stainless steels. First of all, to confirm the beneficial effects of the fine nibium covered precipitate on swelling resistance, the swelling resistance of the newly developed RS6 alloy was investigated depending on the thermal mechanical processing. The reference alloy was selected 316 stainless steel. 
both chemical composition are tabulated in here, and the uh, some of the mechanical processing of each alloy also tabulated. Heavy ion irradiation was performed using a 1.7 megavolt mega tandem ion accelerator at Cambridge Laboratory for the accelerator based surface science of the M uh, MIT. The energy of the uh, nickel ions used for the irradiation was 5 mega electrovolt, and the irradiation temperature was set to 500 Celsius in order to compensate a uh, dose rate effect on microchemistry. A static defocused beam was used to minimize the effect of the strong void suspension caused by the beam restraint. Based on stream software, the depth profile of the radiation damage and those rate caused by the nickel ions were calculated and plotted in the left-hand side figure. In this study, the voids were quantitatively analyzed at 100 nanometer intervals from the 400 to 800 nanometer depths in width of the plus minus 50 nanometer. To measure the void size and density, more than 50 of high magnitude TM images were taken over the irradiation area, and voids were measured by an under focus condition. The void swelling was calculated according to the following equation. The overall microstructure of irradiation 316 stainless steels and the RS alloys are present in right hand side figure. The calculate void swelling based on the void size and density are plotted in the right hand side figure. As shown, this, as shown in the, uh, the figure, void swelling at uh, 8.5 dpa, which is uh, correlate in a 600 nanometer region from the surface work was calculated as a 4.1% for RS6HR and 4.7% for RS6SA respectively from the linearly fit trend line. Meanwhile, obviously swelling was the smallest or the swelling resistance was the largest in the uh, R6B containing a large amount of the zinc site such as dislocations and precipitates. It can be said that even though the major elements in RS alloy can affect on void swelling resistance when it comes to compare between the 316 stainless steel and RS6 assay condition, a large amount of the nanosized uh, niobium carbide precipitates or the precipitate coupled with dislocations would present dominant factor to have suppressed the void nucleation and growth, resulting in less with the swelling in RS6B. Meanwhile, the dislocation itself in RS6HR would not provide effects, effective zinc sites. However, microstructure instability caused by the extreme irradiation condition conducted by 10 to the minus 3 dP per, sec, uh, per second was observed. When you look at the BFTM images and niobium carbide mapping data before and after ion irradiation, relatively large, larger uh, niobium carbides were formed irregularly in the matrix differ from the initial microstructure feature. In addition, from the specific blue box, which magnified in BFTM, the boundaries of the nanosized niobium carbide in HRTM images were not clear at all free are filtered images. Recently, report paper explained that, depending on the dose rate, nanosized alpha prime precipitate dissolved in the matrix. So dose rates, uh, 1.8 multiplied 10 to the minus 3 dP per sec, uh, which used in this study was too high to maintain the nanosized niobium carbide precipitate and caused less than expected improvement in swelling resistance for R6P. Nonetheless, it is anticipated uh, anticipate that the nanosized niobium carbide precipitates will be much stable at lower dose rate, and the swelling resistance of the R6P will be much greater in typical nuclear power plant conditions.
to verify the radiation resistance up to high damage level, additional heavy ion irradiations uh, using 5 mega electrovolt FE ions were performed with a 1.7 mega volt uh, tandem oscillator at Texas A&M ion beam lab. Irradiation temperature was set to 500 and 575 Celsius, considering the trade-off between the temperature and dose rates. Targeted damage was 200 dpa, DPA we, uh, with a dose rate of the 5 volts plus 10 to the minus 4 dpa per sec at 600 nanometer depth from the uh, surface, considered as a plateau region. After the heavy ion irradiation, the overall microstructural features are shown below. Obviously, swelling was uh, smaller in Earth's alley. The representative BFTM images are shown here. To quantify the voice, the size and number density were measured for, uh, for the regions from 400 to 800 nanometer to avoid measurement errors, as explained in the previous section. Based on the void size and number density, void swelling were calculated and plotted in C and F at 100 nanometer in total. From the linearly uh, fitted trend line in C and F, void swelling of R6P are around 3.1% and 2.2% at the 600 nanometer region, which are about one eighth and one seven, uh, sixth of those of the uh, 316 stainless steel, respectively. It has been known that nanoside precipitates can suppress void swelling by absorbing the radiation induced vacancies and the interstitials. Especially in the previous study, we showed that nanoside niobium carbide precipitates are a dominant factor to improve the void swelling resistance of the R6P. In the study, we showed that R6P exhibits a superior void swelling resistance even in high damage level, which is 200 dpa, compared to that of uh, 12 chromium, the ferritin mercantile steel, that has been considered as a, one of the promising material in next generation nuclear systems. For radiation resistance, it, it is crucial uh, whether nanosized niobium carbide precipitates which act as a sink site for the point defect can be maintained under the irradiation. In order to analyze the precipitate, the representative BF, uh, TM images and the niobium maps were used for the R6B radiates at 500 and 575, uh, 575 Celsius respectively. Compared to the initial uh, size and number, number density, precipitates are quite similar for our 6 p irradiate at uh, 500, 575 Celsius, while they are smaller but more numerous for the r 6 p irradiate at 500 Celsius. To characterize niobium uh, carbide precipitate in the irradiate uh, R6P, the orientation relationship between the matrix and niobium precipitates was analyzed using the high resolution TM images from the solid area from the BF images, which taken from the 600 nanometer region. Over the Q1 Q orientation relationship between the niobium carbide precipitate and the matrix were observed, but observed reflections of the niobium carbide precipitates are different depending on where they are uh, away from or nearby the void. For the uh, niobium carbide precipitate away from the void in both irradiated conditions, all reflections of niobium carbide precipitates were observed blur, uh, blurly in FFT patterns. Though the phase boundary between the niobium carbide precipitate and the matrix in HRTM images were not clearly defined, unlike the uh, ninja microstructure feature. Contrary to the uh, niobium carbide precipitate observed away from the void, the reflections of the niobium carbide precipitate form near the void present only along the 111 plane. It can be said that 
Nibium carbide precipitate would be reprecipitates with a recalled nibium, car uh, nibium and the carbon atoms during the irradiation on the void surface. And the size of the precipitate was smaller than the pre existing precipitates. Nonetheless, the size and density of the precipitation were similar with the initial micro, uh, microstructural features. Comparing to typical radiation uh, resistant alloys such as uh, HT9, the cross sectional voice file microstructure was similar, as you can see, left hand side figure. Moreover, compared to commercial 304 stainless steel, Cold Work 316 stainless steel and other promising alloy such as D9 and A709, the void swelling resistance of the RS uh, alloys shows dramatically enhanced feature, as you can see uh, right hand side uh, figure. The nano size precipitates are gradual, uh, generally considered as a neutral defect things for trapping and annihilating radiation use defects. The primary mechanism of the inhibi inhibition of void swelling is dra dramatic evolution of the radiation use defects along the uh, precipitation, uh, precipitate matrix interfaces at elevated temperature. As you can see, left side uh, figure. Some of the voids are attached along the face uh, interface, as you can see the HRTM, uh, HR stem image. As long as the defects are prefer preferred clearly absorbed by a large amount of the non side precipitate, the creation of the lattice site does not lead to an increase of the total volume, leaving a, a huge crosser uh, cons consequently giving a material good swelling resistance. Oh. To measure the mechanical properties on the local area subjected to ion irradiation, nano indentation was conducted. From nano indentation results, the scale of Burke hardness values were measured by extrapolate values obtained based on the Nixgal model to eliminate the indentation side effect, as is shown in left hand side figures. The Burke hardness value of, of for the 316 stainless and RS6P plot in right hand side figure and R tablet. Although R6P shows somewhat greater hardness value than 316 stainless steel in unirradiated condition, R6P shows significantly lower hardness value than 316 stainless steel after irradiation. Or the increase in hardness value after irradiation are much smaller for R6P than 316 stainless steel. Overall, R6P shows enhanced irradiation hardening resistance based on the hardness difference and the post irradiated hardness value compared to the 316 stainless steel. In addition, smaller increment, increment of irradiation hardening at 575 Celsius compared to uh, 500 Celsius is cons consistent with the voice value lizard of the R6P. So in, this, in this study, the newly developed RS6P exhibits superior void swelling resistance compared to 316 stainless steel under low and high damage level at high temperature. Though significant dissolution and reprecipitation of nibium carbide precipitates were observed near voids for the RS6P irradiate at 500 Celsius. Dissolution of nibium carbide precipitation precipitates was less significant for the R6P irradiate at 575 Celsius, uh, which suge uh, suggesting 
the that the better stability the better stability of niobium carbide precipitates. The primary mechanism of the inhibition of the boys failing is dynamic evolution of radiation induced defects along the precipitate matrix interface at elevated temperature. In addition, the degree of irradiation hardening measured by nano indentation was much smaller, which can be correlated with less radiation induced defects for a 6P than a 316 stainless steel. Both significantly less void swelling and less irradiation hardening indicate the superior irradiation resistance of R6P for the application of the next generation nuclear system. Similar with Gen 4 systems, the fusion blanket structure materials will be subject to high heat load and high flux. Uh, around the 14 mega electrovolt fusion neutrons and will expre experience internal pressure load, thermal stress, a substantial magnetic force in case of the plasma disruptions, and high pressure load. So, in designing of the fusion reactor, selection of structural materials is very crucial with respect to power plant efficiency and economic competitiveness. The typical requirements of uh, fusion reactor blanket material is low activation, radiation resistance up to 200 dPa, high temperature properties, and long-term thermal stability, and uh, productivity uh, for, the, uh, uh, for mass production. Based on this requirement, the initial purpose of RSF alloys design was to search for appropriate set of the composition range for nickel, mangan, and chromium, replacing or the reducing the liquid contents to apply to fusion reactor. Therefore, as a first attempt to determine the major element uh, of alloy to use the base uh, composition, thermodynamic calculation was performed uh, using a commercial thermal uh, calc software with the last is a TCF-V9, the database. As a lizard, oh. oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. As a reader, we set a four type of alloys depending on the major element and RSF number three shows the optimized alloy having a large number of the tantalium carbide in homogeneous grain structure, as you can see right hand side figure. So uh, similarly, uh, uh, which I present regarding the RS6P, uh, this uh, this RSF alloy, uh, which for the fusion the reactor, is a similar microstructure uh, between them. The so preliminary results of the heavy ion irradiated RS uh, app number three shows a good void swelling resistance and its characteristic is a similar with a typical FMS such as BN10 and 12 chromium FMS. For the RS app grade will be more optimized in the future in terms of the high temperature property and the helium invertment uh, the resistance. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. If you have questions, do go ahead and type them into the chat pod now. Um, while questions are coming in, we'll take a quick look at the upcoming webinar presentations. In June, a presentation on nuclear waste management strategy for molten salt reactor systems. In July, a gas Cherenkov muons spectrometer for nuclear security applications, and in August, China's multipurpose SMR ACP 100 design and project progress.
let's see here. I've seen some accolades. Um, thanks, Isabella, for that. It was an excellent presentation. I think um, it's apparent from the the technical discussion that the next generation in our nuclear workforce is in good hands. I really appreciate Dr. Um, Gio Shin's expertise and his time that he shared with us. I don't, I don't see, here we go. Often the critique is that ion irradiation does not fully simulate the nuclear irradiation behavior. Can you comment on this? Could you speak again, please? Often, the critique is that ion irradiation does not mm -hmm. fully simulate the nuclear irradiation behavior. Can you comment uh, on that? Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, generally, the ion irradiation is only used uh, to emulate a nuclear a, a neutron irradiation because it is a uh, lot of the uh, advantage to use the uh, ion irradiation. Uh, first of all, it's a time consuming, uh, as a time consuming to emulate a nuclear irradiation. But the big problem is the totally difference uh, regarding the, the damage, the phenomena, mechanism, and et cetera. But uh, to verify the pre preliminarily, uh, which our the newly developed alloy shows the high avoid swelling resistance. We only use the ion irradiation in this, in this study. But in the future, uh, our group has a plan to uh, put some of the specimen in the the commercial nu uh, nuclear the reactor uh, to see the connect with the real the damage the phenomena in microstructure aspect and so uh, between the our the pre-existing the TM or the microstructure the result. So thank you. Are there any more questions for, for Jiho? What is the peak swelling temperature for stainless steel? Uh, the peak 
swelling, the temperature is depending on lots of the factors such as uh, dose rate and the type of the ion and the material, etc. Uh, and the peak, the definition of the peak swelling, the temperature is uh, which temperature is shows a high the void swelling microstructure feature. So depending on the temperature. At low temperature, the only small defects are forming inside the uh, matrix, such as uh, black dots or the, the stachyford tetrahedra. But, at, uh, but increasing the temperature, the microstructure evolution is uh, higher uh, due to the, the thermal dynamically. So the, the some of the, the defects, such as the uh, voids and the interstitials, uh, meet together and form us on the cluster, uh, which uh, eventually form a voice. And more the higher temperature, the individual void are the gathering and got uh, some the big void size. So uh, depending on the temperature, the void size is deep, uh, the difference. Meanwhile, depending on the temperature, as the size is increased, the density is a dramatically de uh, the decrease. So the middle of the temperature is uh, the usually defined as a peak temperature uh, in also in stainless steel and, and other such as a uh, nickel, uh, pure nickel uh, steel, uh, pure nickel alloy and pure Fe uh, alloy. So generally they define the, the middle of the temperature in stainless steel, uh, around the 10 uh, to the minus three or four DPA shows uh, 500 to the 600 Celsius generally. Thank you. Again, congratulations on being the winner of the voted most popular um, Gen 4 presenter for your research. And thanks again for sharing your expertise with us today. Mm -hmm. How can you make a decision for true material for use in an alloy? Could you speak again, please? How can you make a decision for true material for use in an alloy? Uh, to approach the commercially used material, such as uh, the big the companies at the large scale, uh, it will be conducted large kind of the property uh, test. Such as SCC or such as the corrosion and the mechanically and the test and reproductibility is uh, one of the one issues uh, which uh, the formed the formed nanometer size precipitates is well maintained at the the, the large scale industry. So two track will be uh, will be handled in the future or to make a true, uh, true the alloy using the reactor uh, in core material. Thank you. Any more questions for Dr. Shin?
As a reminder, the presentation was recorded and the upload will be um, just a few days if it gives a few days to do some slight editing and rendering and we'll get that presentation uploaded along with the slide deck, the PDF of the slides. Uh, those are also available to you right now in the handouts pane. We have uh, quite a list, a growing list of webinar presentations from the Gen 4. You have a handout in your handouts pane showing the previous and a um, snapshot of the upcoming webinar presentations. I don't see any further questions. Again, thank you, Dr. Chin. Thank you for um, everyone who's joined and participated. We appreciate your, your interest in our topics. And again, if you'll give feedback on the uh, survey that'll follow, that does help us. Patricia, do you have any closing thoughts or remarks? Yeah, sure, of course. Thank you again, uh, Gio, for your excellent presentation. And I would like to echo some of the people who put uh, the appreciation in the chat box about uh, your presentation. It's always good, you know, for us that are aging to see junior workforce like you joining the nuclear in energy industry. Like that we know that the future of this industry is in good hands. And I personally would like to uh, wish you the best uh, for your postdoctoral uh, research. And again, thank you everyone. Um, please join us uh, next month, 15th of June, with Nuclear Waste Management Strategy for Molten Salt Reactor System. Again, thank you everyone. Wishing you a good day or a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.